What if I told you that the fountain of youth that we've all been searching for since the beginning of time was closer than we think? Like I'm talking so close that we don't even have to move. And instead of being a fountain, it's a pool of self-renewing, non-specific cells which rebuild and regenerate our body from within. Guess what? Got good news for you. We have a bunch of these pools inside of us right here, right now. But like with everything else, there's a catch. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are exploring the power of stem cells and, well, why they become less powerful as time goes on. But also, how we may be able to recharge them with some strategic interventions, like fasting. So first we'll do a quick refresher on these magical cells, talk about what happens to them when we age, cover the existing and some new research on how fasting modulates their function and activity, and finally talk about how I structure my protocol in an effort to maximize these little guys' longevity. And by association, my longevity. Funny how it works like that. So without further ado, let's dive in to, to our pool of stem cells. Let's, let's talk about stem cells. Your stem cells. Despite popular belief, once we enter adulthood, we just don't lose our cellular ability to grow. And although we may not be getting physically bigger, we are, in fact, constantly regenerating at the cellular level. Adult stem cells are found throughout the body in every single tissue type and organ system. These little guys function as self-renewing cell pools to replenish dying cells and regenerate damaged tissue throughout life. Like I said, it's a little like a internal fountain of youth, but with mushy membrane cellular pools. Not that aesthetic, but I'll take it. now. The really cool thing here is that stem cells are non-specific, meaning that they could essentially differentiate into multiple different cell types based on what the body needs. A common example of their capabilities is put on show in response to an injury, where we experience and take for granted the rapid response right before our eyes. Now, you may be asking, if all this is happening, how the hell do I get old? Valid point. Here's the thing. Adult stem cells seem to age when we age, as there's increasing evidence that the aging process has adverse effects on stem cell function. And research suggests as they age, their renewal ability deteriorates along with their ability to differentiate into different cell types. Yikes. And this association has become so strong, it suggested that aging-induced deterioration of stem cell function may play a key role in the onset of multiple age-associated disorders. Damn it, aging. You know, I wish there was a YouTube I could follow that focused on defying the underlying cellular and metabolic mechanisms of aging by implementing lifestyle habits that focus on long-term sustainable change and interventions that improve the odds, likelihood, probability, and chances of longevity over time. Oh, that's what, that's what we do? That's what we do. So is there anything we can do about this? Well, maybe. Enter strategic fasting a little bit longer than your normal fast. One of the topics that we've covered on a few of the videos on the ever-growing Fasting 101 playlist is how stem cells can likely be influenced in a good way by strategic fasting, specifically a little bit of a longer fast or what most would call a prolonged fast. Now, although the definitions are clear as mud, most professionals in the field start giving a fast prolonged status once you hit 36 hours and above. And during this extended period, a lot of things tend to happen. There's a typical decrease in blood glucose, insulin, and insulin-like growth factor one, along with many components of cellular growth and proliferation, including one of the most prominent and most important growth factors, mTOR, which is mainly silenced. On the other hand, innate protective and survival pathways such as AMPK, which upregulate different cellular mechanisms that prepare our cells for the incoming low nutrient cellular winter, 
become upregulated. And this extended fasting is also accompanied by more autophagy, which is our in-house cellular recycling program that breaks down weak and damaged parts of the cells and recycles them for things like future energy or just gets rid of them. Pretty convenient, right? This includes mitochondrial cleanup as well, a process called mitophagy which is critical for maintaining metabolic efficiency. During this time, we also flip the metabolic switch and enter a state of ketosis, a metabolic state where we break down and oxidize fat, forming ketone bodies and then leveraging them for energy. And finally, something also seems to happen with stem cells. Let's see what exactly. Stem cells when we fast. First, let's explore some existing data on how fasting influences the different types of stem cells that we have throughout our body, starting with the immune system. Research out of USC displayed that prolonged fasting or a fast over 48 hours induced a initial reduction in white blood cells or immune cells, followed by a stem cell-based immune system regeneration upon refeeding. What researchers found was during this time of acute stress, the white blood cells migrated back to the bone marrow, which is nutrient dense, where they began to regenerate and become supercharged. And as a result, came back stronger and in a better position to protect the body. Okay, I'm interested, but what about the overworked, underappreciated cells? of our gut wall. Well, a 2018 animal study out of MIT showed that fasting induced a metabolic switch in intestinal stem cells. Switching these cells to fatty acid oxidation, AKA running on those ketone bodies and enhancing their function significantly. And get this, this was shown in both young and elderly mice, displaying that 24 hour fasts improve intestinal stem cell function in both. Pretty cool, right? Now, important to call out, as we do in every animal fasting model, this was a 24 hour fast in mice, which due to their size compared to our size, probably translates to a three to five day fast in humans. Just something to remember. Moving on, additional animal data focusing on blood cells suggests that fasting and fasting mimetic diets which we talk about here, are effective in promoting increases in hemopoietic and mesenchyal stem cells, which contribute to the regeneration of various cell types and systems. This is important because hemopoietic stem cells are found in bone marrow and make our blood cells, while mesenchymal stem cells focus on making and repairing skeletal tissue, such as cartilage, bone, and the fat found in bone marrow. Interestingly, one study in elderly mice showed that a 72 hour fast, again, probably in the realm of seven to 10 days for humans, protected hemopoietic stem cells from the toxicity associated with chemotherapy treatment and stimulated their proliferation and regeneration once the treatment was done. The body never ceases to amaze me. All this brings us to the new research that just hit the scientific streets. This study looked into the effects of prolonged fasting in muscle repair and rejuvenation. The researchers used an animal model to see how different lengths of fasting, one day, two days, and two and a half days, impacted the organism, in this case mice, ability to repair and rejuvenate skeletal muscle after injury. And what they found was super cool. Super cool, bro. Sorry, rocket power in me just came out. Although they did not observe enhanced regeneration capabilities while the mice were fasting, they demonstrated that fasting delays muscle regeneration acutely, but promotes a deep state of quiescence or silence, characterized by the downregulation of proliferation genes and the upregulation of genes involved in stemness of muscle stem cells. And stemness means its ability for stem cells to do stem cell things like differentiate and proliferate. And here's why all this is really cool. This stage of deep quiescence and increased stemness is associated with improved long-term tissue maintenance by enhancing the resilient cell proliferation and renewal of muscle stem cell function over time. In other words, increasing the muscle stem cells longevity, slowing down its aging process, and thus 
probably slowing down yours. Another example where strategic fasting is cool for stem cell biological school. Seems to be a trend. So what does this mean and how can it be applied to humans in everyday life? My analysis and strategy. In my eyes, there seems to be a common theme here. The fasting and stem cell relationship looks kind of like this. Short-term impairment followed by long-term strengthening. Meaning this short-term nutrient deprivation, which acts as a good hormetic cellular stressor, may impair acute function in the cell type or tissue, for example, the immune response or muscle growth and repair, but ultimately act as a long-term strengthening pathway making these stem cells which proliferate into these different cell types more resilient to combat the age-associated decline in function that has been observed. Almost like a biological reset button for these non-specific bad boys, improving their longevity and by association, yours. Now, that being said, there's still a lot of research that needs to be conducted, especially in humans. All of this is so damn interesting, but it is still very preliminary. And at this point, there's simply a lot more that we don't know than what we know or think we know. I mean, we still can't answer some very straightforward questions in humans, such as how long do you need to fast to experience a benefit, how often you should fast, and what's the minimum effective dose. All I can tell you is there probably is a highly likely answer to these questions. Although you probably won't find it very helpful. The answer being, it depends on a whole lot of different variables that are unique to you. All that being said though, it does seem like these effects all happen after a little bit more of a prolonged fast compared to the more typical sub 24 hour fast. So here's my current approach to hedge my biological bets and attempt to cover all the bases. And we go through a lot of these strategies in depth in the aforementioned Fasting 101 playlist. First, I fast daily and eat early, typically 18 to 20 hours of fasting and a four to six hour feeding window positioned early in the day. Next, I perform one 24 to 40 hour weekly fast, typically every Monday, as we discuss here. This allows me to hopefully upregulate some of the extended fasting benefits without going all in. And lastly, I perform two 120 plus hour prolonged fasts each year, which checks those extended fasting boxes for me and hopefully gives me a nice little bi-yearly reset. This again is just my attempt at making sense of all the data and hedging my biological bets. Because at this point in time, we still don't know what is truly optimal. One of the main reasons again being that it probably depends. However, what we do know is strategic meal timing has power when it comes to modulating cellular and metabolic health, likely due to its ability to upregulate pathways associated with biological prosperity and vitality over time. Restoring and reawakening our internal fountain of youth is just another potential way it bestows its magic upon us. And if you need a little help upregulating your internal magic, you can join the longevity challenges in Patreon, where we as a group implement longevity focused sustainable change week by week, habit by habit, focusing on getting healthy from the inside out. If interested, all the links for that will be in the description below. When we look through the lens of longevity, knowing that these biological processes exist and have promising potential is important because as you know, knowledge is power. And knowing that you could potentially renew your internal fountain of youth by doing a few strategic habits seems pretty powerful to me, right? I wonder what other secrets we got hidden in there.